Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another devlog. Last week I talked about how to add health bars to enemy sprites in the RPG I'm building in Phaser.js. And this week I want to talk a little part two to that video, which is how to damage those enemy sprites. So here we are in Excaladraw just to visualize this. Let's say we have this hero sprite and he's moving around. We need a way to be able to detect when the hero sprite is within attack range to that enemy sprite. So ideally in our game engine, there will be a collision detection so that the hero sprite and the enemy sprite won't be able to overlap. So we're going to need something that I'm going to call the hero action collider. And that's basically a little box that is going to float in front of our hero sprite. And that way, whenever the hero sprite is moving, we're moving both of these things as a group. We talked about containers last week. And the hero sprite, when the hero action collider, sorry, is overlapping with that enemy sprite, that is basically telling our game engine that, okay, this enemy sprite is in attack range. So if this hero sprite is attacking, then we're going to want to handle the enemy sprite taking damage. So let's take a look at that code. All right, here we are in that test scene. And um, on line 314 here, you can see this is where I'm creating the hero action collider. We're using a function called create interactive game object, which is a helper function that's going to take in some parameters that we need. That's basically going to build that box that floats in front of our hero sprite. Here on line 531, we're creating an overlap between two objects using the physics object from the phaser game engine. So we say this.physics.add.overlap, and then we pass in the two objects that we want that overlap to exist for. So we're passing in the hero action collider that I just showed how we're creating, and then we're passing in the enemy sprites collection, which is all of our enemy sprites. So instead of creating this overlap between just one enemy sprite one at a time, we're passing in all of those enemy sprites uh, collectively. And then we pass in a callback function, which is what we want to happen when that overlap happens. So that callback function takes in two um, arguments. It takes an object A and object B is what we're calling it. And then our enemy is between those two objects. It is the object that is not the hero action collider. And then we are casting that enemy as the log enemy type since we know it is not the hero action collider. And that is just going to make TypeScript happy. Then on line 538, we're saying if the hero sprite is attacking is set to true, then that's the only time that we want to initiate this, uh, the following code, which is that we're going to reset the hero sprite is attacking property to false, and then uh, instantiate a delayed call of 90 milliseconds and say that that is going to be the enemy.takeDamage function. And the enemy is going to take one damage from the hero sprite. Lastly, let's take a look at this take damage function. It exists on the enemy sprite object. It takes in two arguments, damage and the hero. Um, I was originally using the hero to calculate knockback damage, but I'm not sure that I need to pass that in here at all. So currently I'm not using it. The first thing we do is set is taking damage to true to prevent this function from firing a thousand times in the short frames that it takes for the hero sprite to attack. If the enemy sprite itself doesn't exist, which means it has already been removed from the grid engine or the phaser engine that we're using, then we're going to return early and not execute the following function. Then we're going to say that the current sprite health of the enemy is going to equal to their previous health minus the damage that came in when this function was called. Then we're going to add some tweens, which are the animation that's going to happen while they are taking damage. Then we're going to check here on line 432 if the grid engine still has this enemy sprite in it. If it does, we are going to move it, and that is basically the knockback that happens when the hero attacks the enemy. Then we're going to get the enemy container, which is going to contain the enemy and its health bar. This is necessary to repaint that health bar with a correct representation of how much health the enemy still has. So we're going to get that container, and then the health bar is going to equal the container list of objects in that container. And for us, we know that list is two objects, and it is the second item in that list that just happened to be the way it works out, but there's probably a safer way to write this code. If you happen to know a safer way, a better way to do it, 
please leave a comment down below. So the first thing we're gonna do is clear that health bar entirely and then just repaint it. The health bar width is going to equal 24, which was the initial health bar width. And then we're going to minus the max health of that enemy, minus their current health, and then multiply that by the total width of the health bar divided by their max health. And what that basically does is create the number of increments that the health bar should have and minus that number of increments from the total health bar. So I believe the enemies currently have four health and we wanna minus one health. So this is essentially going to um, remove, I think eight pixels, eight times four is 24, I hope. I hope I'm not embarrassing myself with my math in this video. But basically that's how the math should work out. And then we are going to fill that rectangle uh, and use the health bar width variable that we're creating here on line 445. Then uh, we have a delayed call of 320 milliseconds where we're going to reset that is taking damage to false. So that means that they will be able to take damage again after 320 milliseconds. And the last thing we do is check if the enemy sprite health is less than or equal to zero, then we are going to remove them from the grid engine and that destroys their health bar and the sprite itself. On looking at this code now, I probably should have this code that destroys them in front of this code um, that changes that is taking damage property because there's no need to reset that is taking damage property at all if the sprite is going to be uh, destroyed. But because we're checking at the beginning of this function, if the enemy sprite exists or not, it doesn't really matter which order we call those things in. Okay, I don't think any devlog is complete without a demo of the feature in question. So here we are in my game. And when I get into range of this enemy here on the right hand side of the screen, he should attack my character. And if I attack back, you should see that he does take damage and the health bar has decreased in size. So I think they have three health. And yeah, each attack takes away one third of the health bar. Uh, each enemy moves at independent speed. Some are slower, some are faster. So the, we got lucky with two slow ones here. As a full-time web developer who's just learning game development on the side, this was a big learning experience for me. I really had no idea how I was going to do this until I tried to do it. And I'm fairly happy with the results. Um, what do you think? Would you have done it a different way or do you think that I could improve this implementation in my game? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.